Welcome to Inside Japan. Today we'd like to talk about typhoons. Last week Japan was hit by the 19th typhoon of the season. It was predicted to be the largest in 60 years, forcing authorities to issue the highest level possible emergency warnings for 13 prefectures. As a homeowner living just 30 meters or so from this river, the most recent typhoon was a fairly harrowing event. Before making landfall in Japan, Many people predictably stocked up on food and water, leaving shelves empty on the day before the storm. Additional recommended precautions included taping up windows and filling toilets with bags of water in case of sewage system problems. In my area, the city office and nearby schools opened, providing shelter from the storm. With the river rising, many neighbors took shelter elsewhere, and I spent most of that time across town watching footage of the river rising on the local news and getting government notifications on my phone. Around 300,000 households across Japan did end up without power during at least some of the storm. Upon returning the next day, we were happy to find no major problems having been a meter or two higher than where the water rose up to. My office wasn't quite as lucky with the elevator and tower parking both still being out of operation due to minor flooding. Tropical storms bring moisture from the tropics, and this large yet slow-moving storm dropped up to a meter of rain in some locations in just 24 hours. Many areas were unprepared for so much rain, and the riverbanks were unable to hold back the water, resulting in flooding. In some areas, the river was moving so fast that it damaged the riverbed itself, and when the containing wall broke, these areas resulted in very heavy flooding. It seems the flooding at many local strawberry farms will likely adversely affect this year's crop, preventing them from blooming in time to decorate Japan's beloved Christmas cakes. Typhoons are quite common in September and early October. Typhoons differ from hurricanes only in that they originated in the northern versus southern hemispheres. Most typhoons are simply numbered, but more notable hurricanes use a Filipino naming system, with this one being called Hagibis. We'll end this video with various footage of storm damage from across the country. And as always, thanks for watching. This has been Inside Japan. Thank you.